What's up guys, Justin here. Today I want to talk about a restaurant chain. The chain I'm talking about is Ruby Tuesdays. These days it's hard to see a Ruby Tuesdays that's even open anymore. In fact, there's only three that are even near me. One is seven miles away and the other two being almost 30 miles away. But that's enough about things near me. Let's talk about the history of this restaurant chain. Back in 1972, meet Sandy Beal, a 22-year-old student at the University of Tennessee. While he was a finance student full-time, he helped his friend William Colmia run a group of Pizza Hut locations. In the same year, Colmia suffered a heart attack and just before he left this world, he gave Beal $10,000 to open up his own restaurant. Beal, along with four college friends, rounded up another 10000 to open up the first Ruby Tuesdays restaurant. The restaurant was named after the Rolling Stones song by the same name. The restaurant was converted from an old house that had barn wood walls. Ruby Tuesday was also known for Tiffany lamps over tables and hamburgers served on English muffins. Being that the restaurant was located near the University of Tennessee, and it was one of the first locations with a liquor license in Knoxville, Ruby Tuesdays was a hit. In fact, the idea was so successful that Beale dropped out of college to focus on the restaurant. Just 10 years after opening, there were 15 restaurant locations, with nearly all of them inside major shopping malls. Beale had also begun a second restaurant concept called LNN Seafood Grill. Beale realized that if he wanted to expand the chain as well, as well as pursue other concepts, he would need more capital. He did so by selling the company to Morrison's. Ruby Tuesdays was sold for $15 million in cash and stock. Around this time, each Ruby Tuesdays location averaged about $1 million per year per restaurant. Beale was still in charge of the restaurants, including the restaurant division of Morrison. Ellen and Seafood opened in Knoxville in 1984, and Silver Spoon Cafe was born as well. By 1985, there were 35 Ruby Tuesdays locations and 7 Ellen and Seafood locations. Ruby Tuesday at this point had grown to 35 locations, which was more than double the locations since the sale of Morrison's, along with seven L&N locations. Bishop had even decided that Beale should be his successor, and thus Beale was made executive vice president of Morrison's. Beale proved his dedication to the chain when he left his home at Hilton Head, South Carolina to relocate to Mobile, Alabama. By the late 1980s, the company had reached more than 200 units, with 125 of those units being Ruby Tuesday's restaurants. Morrison started to decline in quality, which left the specialty restaurants being the money makers for the company. By the 1990s, Ruby Tuesday's shifted from an emphasis on shopping mall locations to a, also a mix of freestanding locations. In 1992, Morrison restructured itself, emphasizing restaurants over cafeterias, and even saw Beale become CEO of Morrison, resulting in Morrison's first $1 billion revenue year. Beale had become disconnected from the LNN seafood concept, as a lot of Ruby Tuesday's success came from the average check per person being $8.75, and it was nearly impossible to get LNN for under $10 a person. Silver Spoon wasn't doing that great either, as it was too similar to Ruby Tuesday's. Beale wanted to enter the Italian restaurant market and even attempted to require Uno Restaurants Incorporated, but this never happened as neither party could agree on a purchase price. As a result, Beale scrapped Silver Spoon Cafe and turned them into Italian restaurants called Mozzarella's Cafe. He even succeeded to get the average check to just under $10 and that became the new focus for Ruby Tuesday's concepts. Ruby Tuesdays would have a joint venture in 1993 with Dallas-based Tia's Tex-Mex. This just happened to be founded by Chili's own Larry Levine. Beale ke even kept the average check price at about $9 a person. The restaurant Sweet Peas was also formed, which was a southern-style diner house in suburban Atlanta. After growing to four locations, the name was changed to Snaps because there was already a Dallas-based chain called Black Eyed Pea. Ellen and restaurants were all closed as they could not keep the checks under $10 per person. They were either converted to Ruby Tuesdays or Mozzarella's Cafes or just simply closed. 1995 marked the first Ruby Tuesday opening overseas, which was in Hong Kong, and in the same year locations were planned for China, Singapore, Malaysia, and Australia. 
Ruby Tuesdays would show very minimal signs of trouble in 1996 when the chain reported a $2.9 million loss and a $25.9 million loss in asset impairment and restructuring changes. In 1997, Ruby Tuesday established an international division to expand the overseas growth, and this is also when they began franchising. In the summer of 1998, the company moved headquarters to Maryville, Tennessee, and this included an on-site training facility. Mozzarella's cafes were poorly performing and were turned into a new concept called American Cafe. The new overseas markets targeted at this time were Chile, Honduras, Iceland, India, and Kuwait, and there were now a total of 100 franchise restaurants. The beginning of the 2000s started with the selling off of Tia's Tex-Mex and American Cafe chains in order to put full focus on Ruby Tuesdays. With most casual dining chains doing curbside to go, Ruby Tuesdays implemented this in 2001, and eventually all their non-mall locations in 2003. This doubled the revenue for the chain. The company would continue to open about 45 to 50 new restaurants every year, and there were 700 restaurants across the country by 2004. Also in that year, for the first time ever, the chain broke a billion dollars in revenue. Ruby Tuesday was also one of the first restaurant chains to focus on healthy eating with low carb options and even adding nutritional information to the menus. This didn't last long as printing costs for the menus became very expensive. So what happened to this once great chain? Ruby Tuesdays always seems to keep closing more restaurants every year. While I personally think casual dining chains are going away as a result of people becoming more health conscious, and people becoming more foodies thanks to social media food pictures. But why is it other chains can stay afloat but Ruby Tuesdays just can't seem to cut it? For starters, Ruby Tuesday cut back on coupons to put focus on TV advertisements. Hey, wanna see what's between our new buttery toasted pretzel buns? Then go to funbetweenthebuns.com and we'll reveal it all. One hot and juicy pixel at a time. And for an even better deal, share this video with a friend and get an offer that's hard to refuse. Yeah, not gonna lie, that was pretty bad. Not really sure who that was aimed at. They also banked on shopping malls, which is why they had so many mall locations. Of course, what they didn't bank on was shopping malls becoming a thing of the past. With a lot of dying malls, this could only mean that the Ruby Tuesdays would go with it. There was also some bad publicity, such as in 2008 when a man ordered a chicken dish and was served the wrong dish containing crab and he went into anaphylactic shock after eating it, which resulted in death. Ruby Tuesday blamed the customer, stating that the menu is very specific about what they serve. Ruby Tuesday wanted to change their customer base to the upper middle class with more upscale and more expensive food. This alienated their former customer base, and by the time Ruby Tuesday realized the mistake, it was too late. While I'm not sure if others feel this way, but I know for me there's nothing really about their menu that jumps out at me. For example, at Applebee's, I love the whiskey bacon burger with the mango lemonade. Red Lobster, I love the coconut shrimp, and with Uno's, I always get one of the deep dish pizzas. The only thing about Ruby Tuesdays that really makes them unique, at least in my opinion, is the salad bar. While this is minor in the grand scheme of things, but I feel that COVID-19 quickly eliminated the underperforming stores. I say minor just because I feel these underperforming stores were likely on their way out. While this opinion is subjective, I do wonder if sudden closures of the stores made people lose faith in the chain. According to an article I found, no one, not even employees, were warned about store closures. Some employees even found out when they showed up to work and saw a sign on the door with a moving team removing furniture. Some general managers even found out the night before by receiving phone calls from corporate telling them they were closing the next day and that they shouldn't tell any employees. Overall, while it's sad to see a chain die such a slow, painful death, I had great memories going to this chain. One of those being when my uncle took me here for lunch after my high school graduation. I just think that said that of all the restaurant chains, it just couldn't change with the times on top of poor decisions by upper management in the later years. There are only about 300 to 200 restaurants left as of this recording. How much longer will they last? Well, only time will tell. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. 
My friend Slacking Packing provided some of the shots of Abandoned Ruby Tuesdays, which I will provide links in the description. Also, I have covered other restaurant chains that are no longer with us. Links are in the comment section and the description.